Thanks to my patrons for making this video possible. The gods of the virtual seas have spoken and given me a mission. And no matter how long it takes, I will fulfill my mission. I am to find earthly counterparts for every single one of the organisms on planet 4546b. Alright then, let's just dive right into it. Approaching Earth. Ready to land in Sardinia. I have two missions today, with the first one being finding seagrass meadows. I've explored a kelp forest which is definitely an earthly creepvine forest counterpart. Now I want to explore a biome similar to the grassy plateaus. And so I was told, seagrass is what I'm looking for. My second goal today is to find one earthly fauna species that resembles a fauna species on 4546b. Maybe for a comparative genetic study in the future. Who knows? I've been seeing a lot of dead seagrass on the beaches here, and I'm wondering if there are any seagrass meadows in the shallows close to the coast. Let's check it out. Well... The visibility is fantastic, but I also only see dead seagrass here. Uh, here is a group of fish. Attention. The scanner is running out of battery. Oh no. Damn it. I forgot the scanner batteries at home. Oh well. Nothing I can do now. Let's see what's up with the fishies. Striped sea breams are protendric hermaphrodites starting their adult life as males and changing their sex later on to female, at ages 4 to 7. They are gregarious and can sometimes form large schools. If my memory serves me right, the PDA called those fish groups shoals in 4546b. And it, it's not wrong, a shoal is basically a group of animals swimming together, while a school is more specifically a group of animals of the same species swimming together in a coordinated manner, usually in the same direction. Which is also actually what we saw in 4546b. So in both cases, they are both shoaling and schooling. Ooh, a wild fin appears. Yes, this fin automatically recharges my scanner. Now I don't need an extra battery anymore. Just what I needed. What a coincidence. I detect a possible eight-legged thief close by. Are you sure whatever it is you are doing, it is worth it? An eight-legged thief? What? What is she talking about? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I hope it's not those sea monkeys again trying to steal my stuff. But, I mean, they don't have it, like, so... Um, huh? Hmm? Wait a second. What is that? Uh, is that dude carrying a camera? What? Oh... Okay, I guess I have an underwater camera now. I should scan the dude as well, though. The common octopus can change color to blend with its surroundings. They have developed a large nervous system and brain. Research indicates that they are intelligent enough to navigate through mazes, recognize individual people, and perform certain tasks, like opening a jar. Is this the eight-legged thief that PDA was talking about? Come on, he doesn't look so bad. Look at it, it's so cute. Hello, dude. What's up? Uh, okay. All right, Jill. Okay. Oh, ah! Get off my face. Get off my face. Okay. Message received. I will leave you alone and you don't steal my mask, okay? Damn, boy, that was intense. But I do still love octopuses, probably some of my favorite animals out there. Do my eyes deceive me, or is that another cephalopod? The common cuttlefish has two highly developed eyes, eight arms and two tentacles. 
Like other cephalopods, cuttlefish are able to communicate by changing the texture and colors of their skin and by adopting different postures and movements. Now, while not as cuddly, this guy reminds me of my dear friend Cuddles. And even the PDA named Cuddles Cuddlefish, so come on. The cuttlefish has less arms than the cuttlefish though, but they both use their arms to propel themselves and swim around. But the face of Cuddles reminds me more of a pufferfish rather than this guy right here. But anyways, I'd say this qualifies as a good pairing for potential genetic studies in the future. Perfect, one mission accomplished and one to go. I am pretty sure this cuttlefish is trying to scare me right now in this, like, very intimidating posture. Oh no, I will leave. Hey, hey, wait, little guy, where are you going? Oh, look! Seagrass, and it's alive. You brought me exactly where I wanted to go, thanks a lot, dude. Yeah, cool. Mission accomplished. Missions accomplished, I would say, actually. Oh, uh, what is this? Oh, whoa. It really looks like a tiger plant. Except that it's much less aggressive and I'm pretty sure this is an animal and not a plant. And I was right. The cotton spinner is a sea cucumber species usually found at shallow depths in the eastern Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. Sea cucumbers are marine invertebrates closely related to sea urchins and sea stars. The cotton spinner feeds by vacuuming the sediment. Okay, I think we have another good pairing here. Even if one is a plant and the other one is an animal. But my mission, my rules. A little fishy hiding here, but difficult to scan. A lot of sea urchins around. Oh, this poor guy has some plastic on him. There you go. You're welcome. Hmm. Seagrass here is mostly green, while bloodgrass on 4546b is red. Assuming that bloodgrass is also a photosynthetic organism, I'm assuming that this difference in color has to do with differences in pigments. Bloodgrass probably has a photosynthetic pigment that reflects red, while these here have chlorophyll, which reflects green. Neptune grass is the seagrass species only found in the Mediterranean Sea, forming large rich meadows and supporting a rich ecosystem. Seagrass meadows are among the most productive ecosystems in the world. Posidonia species have very high carbon dioxide absorption capacity, and Neptune grass is the most important source of oxygen to coastal waters in the Mediterranean Sea. Posidonia meadows are threatened by rising sea temperatures which slows their growth, pollution, fishing and damage by anchors. Hmm. Seems like one of those uh, environments that needs protecting over here. Even though seagrass meadows do not seem to have a very bright future, especially here in the Mediterranean, I'm still quite happy that I could find some seagrass plateaus or meadows, as we call them here on Earth, in shallow waters, uh, even in areas where there's a lot of tourism during the summer, which tends to destroy some of these environments. The plateaus in 4546b occur a bit deeper than 5 to 7 meters, which is more or less the depth at which I was today. So next time, I'm gonna look for deeper seagrass meadows, which I suspect are even richer than those ones here. Anyways, I do hope you enjoyed today's earthly exploration, and earthly salutations to you all.
Hello everyone, if you've watched this far, thank you very much. Throughout this series, I will probably be encountering a lot of ecosystems that are in trouble, given the current situation of the world. Seagrass meadows that we've just talked about are an example of that. So in every video, I will leave links down in the description for projects and initiatives that aim at protecting these environments in one way or another. You can check them out to donate, to participate, to learn more about what's happening or about the projects themselves or even to volunteer if you are interested in, you know, engaging even further with these issues. If you want to check out those links, they will be down below. Also, if you want to support more videos like this, check out my Patreon down below or my affiliate links. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to all my Patreons for supporting this channel, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.